Okay, everybody, this is the, what we are painting today. What a cute little project for Easter. I just love it. I've titled this The Easter Egg Hunt, and this is based off of these bunnies that we had living in our herb planters on our deck last year, and um, actually it was two years ago, and the baby bunnies that were in there, and they were just so cute being in those planters. And um, so this is kind of taking me back to that when the mama would hop in there and feed the babies. So I hope that you enjoy painting this. Let's get started, everybody. All right, we're going to start on this surface here. So I'm going to tell you what I did to get it ready. So this is just a, a masonite board. This is my funky plaque, and I just named it that because instead of having smooth sides, I cut this little hole inside of it, and so I thought it was a little funky, so I, I titled it Funky Plaque. So, and this is available on my website, so it's masonite. So um, masonite, generally, you don't need to do a lot to prep it, but you still want your paint to adhere well to it. If you ever want to... Uh, tape something off, um, you know, to make a, a specific design or a space on your, your piece, then you want to tape it off. And to keep the paint from lifting when you tape it, it's very important to put multi-purpose sealer on it first. Um, no matter what the surface is, I even use this on glass when I'm working on glass. Just uh, apply a good coat of it. Um, with a dampened artist sponge, lightly sanded. If you feel like you need two, go for it, but generally one will do. And then uh, if you want to save a step, um, I have done this before, but I really prefer to apply this just by itself. You can mix it with your first coat of paint, mix the multi-purpose sealer in there, and um, it will, the paint and the multi purpose sealer will work well together and that's another way you can get it onto your project but just a dampen artist sponge so quick nice smooth thin coats I base this with um, buttermilk um, you could mix a little white in it if you wanted a little bit more paler yellow on here so now we're going to get ready to transfer on our design and I don't generally do this often in my videos anymore but I feel like I should start doing it occasionally because I could have some new painters out there that's never um, done this. Now, um, I've taken my line drawing here, my kind of rough sketch. I'll be adding other stuff to it. And I'm going to put it on here where I think that it's more appealing to the eye. I've got it a little bit off-center um, because the eggs are over here and we'll probably have some flowers poking up over here. So it will all balance out. I, I need to straighten it just a little bit and I've just applied a couple of pieces of tape on here. I'm going to move it up just a little. Okay, I think that will work very well for me. Okay, now this is graphite paper. You can buy it at Hobby Lobby's, Michael's. I'm sure that Walmart sells it. Um, it comes in uh, different brands. So this is a low Cornell brand. I don't think uh, Hobby Lobby used to sell that, but I don't think they do anymore. Um, this is Master Touch. This is from Hobby Lobby. This is white, and uh, Hobby Lobby does sell this one, Royal Lang Nickel. So you can get it in um, lots of brands. It's all pretty much the same. Um, generally it comes in big sheets. This one has two 18 by 24 sheets in it, so you'll want to cut it cut it down to smaller sizes. This one's still a pretty big size because I use it for my bigger uh, patterns, so I do keep a piece of it larger. Um, so I'm just going to slip this under here. This is just the piece that I grabbed, so I'm going to lock my wheel in so it doesn't spin on me. Um, this wheel, I get a lot of uh, questions asking where I got this wheel, and it came from the Artist Club. Um, you can go to their website and just type in easel and it will bring it up. So we just want to um, use a stylus or a pen that no longer works. You can even use a pencil. Just something to transfer on our lines here and I don't have my flowers I'm gonna put some flowers in here and I don't have those lines on here yet 
because I'm not really sure where I'm going to place my flowers. Now for my bunny, I just want to kind of make some dotted lines going around here for like placement of where he's going to be. And we can go ahead and outline his feet. And then our pot, the edge of our pot. There's not a whole lot of lines on this one right now to transfer on, but as I add more pattern details into this, you will um, have more lines to transfer on. So, what I like to do is transfer the stuff that's in the back on, and then after I get it all painted, I'll put the pattern back on and transfer in the um, stuff that's more in front. Yeah, I felt like that was kind of wobbly there, tracing that one. So, that should have it on there good enough to start, so you can kind of see where we're going with our bunny. Um, I titled this one the Easter Egg Hunt. Um, we had some bunnies living in our... Um, herb planters, which we had big planters on our deck, and we, we plant herbs in them every year. And we had a bunny build a nest for its babies and right underneath my chives. So I couldn't have my chives that year. <laughs> I wasn't too happy about that, but it was fun seeing the bunnies. And this kind of reminds me of that, um, those bunnies in our herb pot. So I'm going to get my colors gathered up so we can start adding some base coats on here. Okay, we've got everything is ready to go here, and we are going to start adding some base coats in here. Now, I'm going to use a half inch flat brush to start with, and I'll go down to some smaller sizes. I did increase the size of my eggs. I thought they were a little too small. We are going to start uh, base coating the pot, and we're going to use dried clay. I'm using a half inch flat. Remember to dampen your brush. Get your brush woke up before you even start to use it by letting the bristles soak up all the water. Get them nice and moist and ready to paint for you. And you won't have a dry brush and your paint won't be dragging. And we're just going to follow our pattern here and paint this in. If we don't paint over our graphite lines, we can come back and erase them. But uh, if we paint over them, they're in the project forever. So you'll have to be sure and apply enough paint to cover them. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So when you dampen your brush in the water to begin with, you let it soak up. Let the bristles soak up. Don't just swish it around in your water and go. You gotta let the bristles soak up the water. Get nice and full and plump, and then you go touch your paper towel to your surface to get the excess water out. And here is where you can go to a smaller brush if you wish to. Go around these feet, but if you can learn to work with a larger brush, it is more helpful. It teaches you better brush control. I'm going to spritz my palette with some water so that I can get a little bit of water into my paint. It's not wanting to move on my brush. It was dragging, so that meant I did not have enough moisture in my brush. It'll take a couple of coats. This first coat is going to be choppy and ugly, and getting base coats on is the least favorite thing of most people. And um, not a lot. Of fun. Okay. Now for the grass. 
I'm going to base in with a couple of colors here. I'm going to use leaf green. And I'm going to go to a much smaller brush now. I'll put a little bit of leaf green out on my palette. Leaf green, one of my favorite greens, leaf green. I love it. And I'm going to put a little bit of green tea. This is also going to be possibly one of my highlight colors. But I'm thinking I want a leaf maybe painted in with that color. So I'm going to grab a round brush. Maybe a four round if I can find one. Wake it up in the water. It's not as big a brush, so it won't take as long to uh, soak up the water. And then we're going to pull some paint out into our brush. I got a little bit, had some water on, had some water on my ferrule, and it just rolled right down into my paint and added more water to it, which is fine. I can just pull more paint into that and mix that in there. But if you're painting on your project and that happens, you probably won't be too happy. So we're going to base in this leaf with leaf green. I just absolutely love this color because it is um, got a blue tint to it. And I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful color. get a little better point on this. This brush is not wanting to give me as good a point as I would like, so I'm going to find a different four. Try this one. This one's really old and beat up and can't even read it. I'm going to grab some water over here from my spritzed water. That's my clean water for when I need it for floating or thinning my paint. Okay, let's do this one here. I'm going to give it a little bit of an outline. And then we'll just fill it in. So if you are very proficient with base coating, you can skip through all of this part. Um, this is mostly for beginners. All right, I'm going to pick up some of this green tea on my dirty brush. Actually, I think I'm just going to mix these two together. Get a little bit different color green. And I might add another leaf in here. I haven't decided. A little bit more of the green. It's green tree, not green tea. They used to have, Deco Art used to have a color named green tea. But this one is green tree. trying to decide. I might put a leaf on the other side of the bunny. I'm just going to come right down onto where that rabbit is so that when I paint the rabbit in, the leaf will kind of be behind the rabbit. Okay. And I'm not sure what I'm going to paint the eggs in yet because I don't um, really know yet what colors I'm using in the design and I want them to be, you know, from those colors. So I'm going to let this get dry and I possibly will add another leaf in here somewhere and get my second base coats on and then we will come back and get going. Okay, I have my two coats on. They're drying. But I want to get a, a light base coat on my bunny here. 
and the, the the bunnies were more brown the ones that were in my planter so I'm gonna try this morning mist it's kind of this purplish gray color and I might add a little bit of white to it let me put some white out in case I want to lighten this base color I might want to go darker I don't know Oop. And I have this other color that I might use on it which is plum suede it's a little bit darker so I think I'll put <clears throat> all three of these colors out the, the morning mist the plum suede and my white see what we're gonna see I've got my palette misted with water over here so let me see what this color is going to look like I kind of want to bring more lighter colors on top of my base color so I think I'm just going to brush mix these two together and that's maybe just a touch too dark there we go. It looks a little purpley, but that's okay. I'm gonna wipe. I just wiped my brush off to get the excess off because what I put in here is plenty. Because I just want a rough placing of color in here. Oh, our fluffy little bunny. here just kind of get we're just kind of roughing that in we're not um, trying to make it neat or anything we're gonna try and make a fuzzy little bunny now I'm not a, I'm not an animal painter so you know don't expect a lot out of this looking like a real animal when we're done but fingers crossed because I like a challenge and and uh, I'm hoping for the best all right I'm gonna put some center veins in my leaves and remember this one is turned and that's not quite right so let me erase that let's see my line drawing see where I had my Mark it. I think I ended up making this leaf a lot bigger than what I intended. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's got a bend here, and then it's, it's turned here. Okay, and so it will have a, a center vein there, and maybe a little peak of it coming out from down here. Now, um, I'm just using my favorite chalk pencil, which is available on my website, and then this is my tri eraser, which you can also get on my website. I'm going to erase back my lines that I didn't get any paint on. So we can see where we're at here. Brush the eraser shavings away from your paint, always important. Okay, now I can see my um, edge of my pot here, but I'll just lightly draw that line on there for you. So we're going to start working on our pot first. Okay, we're going to start doing some shading on this flower pot, so I'm going to put some burnt orange out. some burnt umber okay and grab your favorite shading brush um, my favorite brushes to shade with are these curved flats this is a low Cornell brand it is no longer available 
but the brush guys have this one it's called a soft curve it's uh, pretty much identical to this one a little bit softer bristles here than what these are of course these bristles could just be worn out but they both work wonderful really really help um, students learn with their floating so I'm going to wake this brush up by putting it in water letting the bristles fill completely up and then laying it on my paper towel to wick out the excess water I'm not sure my burnt orange is going to show up here let me test it it will show up for our first layer so let's start with our burnt orange and we're just going to load the corner of our brush you can load this way this is how I like to load so I can get both sides of the brush or you can do it like this where you do up and back and up and back but that's that's harder for me so I don't do it that way but whatever is easiest for you that's the way that I want you to float if you've learned a specific technique with a specific uh, teacher and it works for you then use that okay so we're gonna go along this left side <clears throat> I really haven't determined where my light source is gonna be yet I'm going to go. I want to bring it out into the flower pot some. Need some more water. Uh, the size I'm using is a 12, so you could use a 3 8 inch uh, angle brush if you're an angle brush user. Go along this edge. And I'm going to walk it over. I'm going to go underneath the rim here. I'm going to be up on the very tiptoe here because I think I'm going to have more of my light coming over here on this side. And then I'm going to lay my brush flat as I work it over. Now don't go into that paint unless it's it's uh, dried because you'll just you'll just start removing it. And then your frustrations will start because it's like, oh, why didn't I wait? It doesn't take that long for the paint to dry. Have a sip of coffee if it's not drying as quickly as you'd like. Okay, I'm going to go down this edge as well, but I'm not going to bring it as far over as I did on that edge. And around our egg here and along our bottom. Again, you want to make sure that float over there is dry, or you'll just be removing it. Okay. So this is mostly dry, so I'm just taking my mop brush and kind of smoothing out any rough places. I'm going to go around our little bunny feet here. bit along this outer edge okay that's the beginning of our shading on our pot still looks very rough I know but uh, stay with me I've not led you astray so have faith it will be just what you need I'm cleaning my mop brush now when you clean your mop brush, you go to a damp place. You use it dry, and I like the white ones. Um, go to a damp place on your paper towel to clean out the paint, and then a dry place to dry it off. And then you're good to go for the next time that you need it, so that you want to clean it after each color or each use, so that you're not transferring paint all over your design, because... Um, if you uh, have a color on here and you haven't cleaned it out, when you go to mop another color, you're reactivating. You're dampening and 
waking up the paint that's on the brush and then you're just going to transfer it everywhere so um, important step to always remember okay let's darken that with some burnt umber we're going to mix our burnt orange and our burnt umber together and get a little bit deeper value in here and a little bit darker so I'm probably going to use a little bit more burnt umber than I am burnt orange I still want to keep it you know more on the orangey side if I can so now we're just going to create a really dark places we got a nice dark place here and I've got way too much water in my brush Side my lines here, so let me clean that up. Okay, I'm gonna mop this a little bit. I'm definitely gonna want to darken that because it's not quite dark enough for me. Um, we'll go around our eggs here, along our bottom, just close to the the bottom there. We don't have to bring bring this out like we did our last color. And I've got this pretty uh, sheer so that means I've mixed there was water in my brush and I let it mix in with the paint as I was blending it over there so it's a nice light color as I'm doing this. Again we can always come back and darken and deepen but if we get it too dark to begin with then we won't be getting the benefit of having you know all that depth in there a little bit on that edge go down inside the pot here down inside of it here and then I want to be up on the very tippy toe of this and come and bring some underneath and then again laying it a little flat as I come across. That float wasn't quite dry there because it was so wet to begin with. So I'll just leave it right there. A little bit more mix here. Yeah, I want to put a little bit along this edge. Let's go around our little bunny feet just here, right here in the underneath them. And then we'll mop that very softly. I'm just creating a little shadow there. I think I'm going to put a little bit of this mix of color up here because I'm going to have a little bit of bunny fur coming over the pot. So I'm just going to sloppily add a little bit of this right up here. Start creating a little bit of a shadow that's going to be forming right there. And then a little bit on this outer edge. Give it a little shape. And I really want this area right here to be darker. Getting some nice shape and shadowing to that. Okay, so we're going to get ready to start adding some highlights on here. Okay, so for our highlight, I've got some pumpkin. Let me shake that up. Squirt a little bit of this out. We'll start with that and I want to use a scruffy brush so I want you to grab a um, this is a 5 16th Royal Crafter Choice domed scruffy brush 
Patricia Rawlinson, I believe, still sells these on her website. That's where I got it. And you can also check with the brush guys and see if they carry it. But they come in all different sizes, and they're great brushes to have. Here's a, here's a bigger one. This one's a 3 8 inch one. And many sizes that it comes in. So we're going to use this dry. And let me grab a paper towel. ones out here but apparently not. Okay so we need to use a dry paper towel for this. So I'm going to dip my brush into this color. It's just on the end of the brush. Okay. I'm going to take it to my paper towel and start removing the paint on it. The thickness of the paint. There's still going to be paint in it. Okay. I removed most of the paint out of there. Okay, so we're just going to start very softly rubbing this onto our clay pot. And of course, it's not going to show up much at all to begin with. We want highlights through here. So let's try some more of that. The first one you, you never can see very well. Alright, let's try this again. A little bit of pumpkin. I'm still just giving very light pressure here. I'm not to, I'm not scrubbing hard. I'm going to add, let's see, I've got some coral shell here. Let me put some of it out before I start adding some white in here and see if this will, this might be too pale, I think. So I'm going to go into my dried clay, just dirty brush right into it, add some white, a little bit of pumpkin. Try this mix. So dried clay, pumpkin, and white equally on the brush, blended on your palette. And now we're going to see if we can get some lightening up on here. There we go. Getting some lightening on there. much better. Let me get a little bit more pumpkin in that mix. We need that little bit of white in there I guess to really start bringing out the, the highlight. Now we're starting to really that highlight it over here. Okay, so that is our first layer of highlight on there. Okay, we don't want to wash our brush, but I'm going to take a little bit of white on that dirty brush and mix it in. It's still like this very light peachy color. And I'm going to remove the excess out of there. And now we're going to make a more concentrated highlight in here. So I'm going to keep this more in this area right here. I am just barely letting the bristles touch right here. We want our highlight across here. And a little bit right here. Not too much, because our, our highlight's mostly concentrated here, so I might come back and wash some dried clay over that so it's not so bright, because we want to keep our highlight more concentrated in this area right here, and along this edge. Okay, alright, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more white on my brush and work it in. You see it's getting lighter with each time that I pick up the white. So we started out with that dirty mix, that dirty mix of dried clay, pumpkin, and white, equal amounts right there. Added a little more white, a little more white, and then we're just going to keep this even smaller. You can go down to a smaller brush if you need to. And right here, and along this edge. Place that down. 
down just a little bit. I'm going to use my white eraser. I got, I'm going to get just a little bit of water on it. Touch my paper towel because I don't want too much. I just want to remove that little bit of white that I just put right there. It was a little stark. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go down to a smaller brush because I want my highlight to start getting smaller. So I'm going to find a smaller stiff brush. This one's a number four Royal Majestic. I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby. Don't know if they still sell these or not. I've had it a really long time. So I'm going to get just white this time and offload that and see what we can do. Our highlight now very gently a little bit more white when you first load a dry brush with the paint it doesn't get up into the bristles very well to get to, like in there so sometimes you got to load it a couple times okay there we go nice highlight color and along this edge a little bit and again too far over and too dark drop of water tap my paper towel another drop of water there we go okay so that I think is going to be a nice little highlight for our pot. So I'm going to leave it there. I think I might eventually come back. I think this side right here, I need to darken the corner on it. So I'm going to do that with just straight burnt umber right there. Let me take a look. I like to look through the lens on my camera so that I can uh, see it from a different perspective and see what I need. So let's go with just a little bit of just a straight burnt ember. Maybe dip into a little bit of green. And that will just darken that burnt ember a little bit. And we're going to go here. Now when you have a V, when you're painting and you have a V, I've got a lot of water on here so I'm barely touching the surface here. You want to round that V out. You want to put the paint in there and then round that V out and it creates a nice shadowy area in there. I mean it makes a, a nice shape. I'll put some in these darker areas. So that was burnt umber with just a little bit of that green in there. I'm going to mix a tiny bit more here because I have too much paint in my brush. I mean too much water. <laughs> and I want this to be a little bit darker. I want it to be darker next to that leaf there, not so much on the outer edge, so keep it kind of down, you know. Not sure my pot has the same uh, shape going around here. It needs to have a little bit coming back here. I mean, I could cover that with grasses and stuff but that was kind of bugging me <laughs> I didn't want that that look and my my lip here goes up a little bit higher see the rim comes up and this one doesn't so maybe I'll just make that one come up a little bit and I'll put some dried clay in there add a little bit of burnt orange to it Uh, 
it's still not still not the same but I think I'll just put some leaves and grasses over that okay I think I'm gonna put a little bit of this shading color which is our burnt umber and green if you get too much green on your brush just keep adding the burnt umber until it goes back to a brown color I'm gonna put a little bit I'm gonna kind of step on the toe here and put a little bit around the eggs here up on the tippy tippy toe let me zoom in just a little bit up on the tippy toe of my brush and then just I'm just barely putting any paint on there okay that's a little B area so I want to just darken that area right there take the water edge and just gently smooth that out Get a little bit of water on my brush here. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's a little bit of a V, so I'm going to just kind of work that out a little bit. And a little bit here. Not too much. I don't want that to be very big because that's more of the highlight side. So just a tiny little bit there. And then we want to define the um, rim a little bit more, so we're just going to kind of choppily put some under there and take the water edge and smooth it out keep it nice and thin we don't want to get too uh, too dark and then we're going to need some up here I think again that was a V so I put some up in there and just kind of worked it out Got outlines here, so I'm just going to clean that up with a damp brush. Okay, I think that's making our pot look pretty darn good there. Maybe just get a little bit of water on my brush because I think I have enough paint in it. It just wasn't damp. Up on the very tippy toe and just a little bit around. So we deepened here, inside and inside, just around the very tip, the front, the top of the feet. Okay, we did a little bit here, a very little bit along here, and then smoothed it out. We did here. This is the biggest area that we did. Went into the corner and rounded it out. A little bit here. We did a little bit of rounding here because that's a small V. Went around this egg and a little bit of rounding here. And so let me put just a little bit along this bottom edge. I don't want too much down there. Okay, and we'll be having some grasses and stuff coming up here. So I think that looks pretty good for our um, pot. So I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it right now. Um, I'm going to um, wait and see how it uh, looks. So our uh, scruffy brushes, we want to clean those. If you have plenty of extra scruffy brushes in case we need to come back and do any dry brushing, then just wash them out with water. If you do not have a, a bunch of scruffy brushes, then I just want you to clean the paint out with some hand sanitizer. Just right on your palette, squirt some on there, and just clean them out. And then wipe them out on a dry paper towel. So you'll just um, let the hand sanitizer loosen that paint. And then go to your dry paper towel and work that paint out of your brush. And just do it a couple times. With the light colors, it won't take too much to get that out of there. And just, I'm not even showing you on camera what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm putting hand sanitizer in the brush, working it in, and then I'm just wiping it out on a dry paper towel. Sometimes I think I have a camera that goes the whole length of my uh, table, but <laughs> it doesn't, so I get off camera and okay so I have other brushes so I'm just gonna kind of wash this other one out oops and then just rub it on 
my paper towel to get any excess out. It's still got paint in it, so I will have to definitely clean that um, when I'm done. Okay, let's start working on the leaves. Okay, flower pot is done for now. We'll see if we need to do any adjusting later. So we're going to work on our leaves here. Okay, so we want to darken with... Um, I think I'm going to try Hauser Dark Green. Let me get a smaller curved flat or angle brush or flat brush. I like to float with flat brushes too. We'll get some of that out. And I think I'm also going to get just a tiny bit of soft black out because I might need to darken that Hauser Dark Green just a little bit. I'm going to get a size 10 curved flat, wake it up in my water, okay so I'm going to start with just the Hauser dark green and I'm going to go to my, um, my lighter leaves and shade them. So we're going to shade next to this one. Okay, go on the other side of that as well. to the bunny here. Just kind of make it choppy. We don't know how far up our fur is going to come on there. I do want to soften it out though a little bit. I don't want it to be a hard, hard line on there. Okay, go next to this leaf. More water. Pick up water, work it into my brush. Get this one. A little bit more paint. Kind of go down beside this one. By the time we get the fur on here for this one, we probably won't see that edge of that leaf at all. All right, a little bit more water. A little bit more paint here. A little bit more water. edge. It's kind of up on the toe of the brush there. And now I'm laying it a little bit flat, coming down to that little V right there. Kind of work that in and take the mop brush and soften that. And we'll go up on this edge. Remember to make sure that your other floats are dry so that you don't go through the through a float because if you go through it, you're going to remove it. Okay, and then this one, I'm just going to put a little bit right there. That is that those leaves. Let's go ahead while we have this color and 
do our center vein. So we're just going to go right next to the line that we created. And I've got the paint. I'm laying it down on the right side, even though we shadowed or shaded the left side. I want this to be on the right side. Or, you know, towards the inside. Well, actually, just on the right side. Just a tiny bit more paint. This is a much smaller leaf, so I'm really up on the toe of this brush here. This one. Okay, that was with the Hauser dark green. Okay, so now for our other ones, I'm going to add that soft black in there and make this a really dark color, like a black green almost. Water in my brush. Okay, let's start here with this one. And we'll shade right here. When you get to this narrow edge, come up on the toe. So I've got my brush flat here, but as I go along this edge, I'm lifting or turning this edge up so that I only have the very edge of that brush going into there. And right here, we're going to do the same thing. I've got my brush pretty flat there, and then I'm going to start lifting up that curved part of the brush or the opposite side that I have paint on. And just go in with that fine edge of the brush. Okay, I want a little bit of this back here. Right there, I think. Right, this other, other one here. I'm going to shade down here at the base. Actually, I can pull this across all of those. It would be best. And then this one's going to get it going down the edge here. More water. And let's do our center veins. too wide there, so I'm going to wipe it off with the water edge and stay up on the toe a little bit more here. And then this one, I'm kind of up on the toe, just softly brushing that down, that line. So we can definitely tell that one leaf is darker than the other one. Okay, now we want to start adding some highlights on here. So I think I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to try a different color here on the lighter ones. I'm going to use Laguna. Get a fun little Eastery color in here. And then on the other ones, I'll probably use green tea. Or I might use Laguna on the dark ones and use Shoreline on the other ones. So I'm not really 100% sure which colors I'm going to be using here. So we'll put them out and see what I decide to use because I'm not. Uh, certain what I want to use yet. Okay. Sorry for the delay. I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Let's um, I really think this might be too light. And we painted it in. 
I really kind of want to use that color on my my eggs, but I might just have to go with that one. Okay, let's try this one. I get a little bit of the water out of my brush just by laying my brush on my paper towel, let it wick it out. I still need water in it, so I'm going to go right back here. I just didn't want quite that much. Okay, so on our lighter leaves, yep, that's not going to show up, so we're going to have to Let's brush mix these two. So we're going to do Shoreline and Laguna. We'll just do equal, equal amount here. And yeah, let's see if that's going to show up. Yeah, we'll put a little bit right in there. We can just barely touch the edge down there. A little bit of light. By the time we put our flowers in here, some of this we won't see at all. So, all right, so we've got that equal mix. And a little bit in there. And on this edge. my water edge and just kind of smooth that out. We don't want any hard lines, so if it's leaving a little bit of a hard line, just smooth that out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put this on the opposite side of our center vein, and I'm just going to be up on the toe and try and keep that as thin as possible. Not going the whole length, keeping it more like in the center of the vein. The center of the area that we're placing it. It's on the opposite side that we put the previous on there. Okay, we'll probably come back and brighten that and I might darken some of the shading on Especially this one it needs to be a little bit darker. Let's add some highlights on the dark leaves and then we'll see where we need to touch up. Alright, so with that one, I'm going to go with the um, Laguna. Let's see how it looks with some green tea mixed in. That looks like a nice color. So we'll just do an equal, equal mix here. Let's see how this goes might be too bright. Up on the edge. I just want to kind of go along that edge of the leaf. And this is kind of why I had you um, put the pattern in here without the flowers. So you can see how to do the leaf completely. And if you don't want to add flowers later, you don't have to. He can just be like in the herbs. <laughs> wide right there. I need some on this edge. A little bit right there. And along this vein. Get the illusion of the vein there. need that to be a little bit brighter there. Okay, I have to do a little bit more on this. On the 
this one. This was the first one I did and I probably had too much water in my brush because that just faded right down in there. Okay, that was our first shading and our first highlighting on our leaves. I think they're looking pretty good. We want to brighten up now. So I think I'm going to add some cad yellow on, on my light leaves and then just white on my other ones. This color here we, we didn't end end up using, so I'm going to make sure it doesn't get on our palette list. Okay, um, we're going to add a little bit of Cad Yellow, and this is a pretty transparent color, so it won't um, it won't go crazy. Just a little bit on our leaves, just. Just creating another depth of color. On there. We don't, you know, just a few key places. That's all you need it. So don't, um, don't go crazy with it. Okay, and then on our other ones, our other leaves here, we'll brighten up. First, let me darken that one shading that's kind of bothering me. Get the water out of my brush here. This one right here. Just a scooch darker. And that's just with that Hauser, Hauser Dark Green. Okay, so let's um, brighten up on our other ones. And I'm going to use the um, Cad Yellow and green tea. Keep this beautiful green here. It's just a yellow green color. Too much water in my brush. It's so pretty. So I'm just going to put a little bit there. I need to fix my, my turned edge there because it's kind of bugging me. I don't really like how it's looking. My dark color needs to I'm put a little bit of this along that center vein on that one. And it's just a small amount of paint, so don't... Uh, really, I, I squirted way too much out there since we're just using a small amount. Let me fix this. Sure, what the issue is here. Not really sure, but I'm not liking it. So. Down the edge more. This is where you got to do your tweaking and decide what to uh, 
what your leaves need. Okay. This one needs. This one needs. That's a little bit of that yellow, yellowy mix there. I like it much brighter here. Wrong color. I'm using the wrong color. <laughs> Just pick up any color. That's what I just did. Okay, where was I? Oh, right here. Well, that leaf still isn't making me happy. Somehow my cur curved edge is not. Not doing what it needs to do. Just not shaped right. Just not liking how it's shaped. In case you were wondering, I'm not liking how it's shaped. Well, that's a little bit better, so I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, I'm going to take this dark color and put a little bit more down in here at the base of everything. And really kind of set that down in the pot. Let's add some grasses in here. We're going to use all the colors that we just have been using in the leaves and create some fun little um, grass is coming out of here. I'm going to go to my four round. Actually, I might grab a, a smaller round here. A two round. A two. A two, a four. Just to have a couple of, of rounds ready so that we can add some uh, little detailed grasses in here. Okay, we've got all of our greens out here, so I'm just going to pick up some greens randomly. This is the leaf green. Right now I've got the four, four flat. I want to have a little bit of fatter ones. We're going to we're going to shade these so that they set down in the pot, but we're just going to go in here and add maybe add a little bit of green tea to that so it will stand up on top a little bit. So, I want this one to come from behind. I'm just going to grab any of the greens randomly and work them into some grasses coming out of here. And you have to have some water mixed in with your paint so it will flow off of your, your brush. Follow what I'm doing or do your own thing when it gets a little bit darker green here. Some of these are going to have little daisies on them. So I want those to be a little bit darker. some of my blues. Get some water. I'm, I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just dirty brushing right into that. And go over your leaves, go behind your leaves, whatever. Whatever works. 
I'm using this for, but I'm staying way up on the tip of this brush. That's a pretty, pretty fat one there, so I'm going to have to go with it because it's in there now. I'll put some lighter ones in there and a few smaller ones. Try to give your grasses a little bit of movement. We don't want them to pretty good for our grasses there. So we're going to add some daisies on here I think. Okay I'm going to take a quick little bit of that Hauser dark green and i oh, still a little bit wet there. Just kind of set those down in there. Set these down and over here. Just a little bit of Hauser dark green. A little bit more of this next to the bunny here. Might have to add just a tiny bit of soft black in there for right right here at the base, or it's not gonna where it goes into the pot, or it's not gonna cover up those those grasses as well. Just push that right there next to the bunny. Okay, let's add some little daisies on here. I'm going to use some white and just pick some. Um, I'm loading my brush to where it's flat. It's a round brush, but I loaded it to where it's flat just by, you know, laying my brush down like this and loading it. Okay. All right. So let's figure out where we want some daisies. So let's have one. I'm not sure white's going to show up real well out here, but let's give it a shot. are not great big giant daisies because we just have a little pot here so we don't need anything great big so don't get uh, too carried away I'm gonna put one down here and I'll put one here can't see that one as well might have to add a little bit of yellow to it Although we have yellow in the background, I'm not sure how well that's going to show up. I don't like that yellow. Too bright. Remove it. Let me get it out of my brush. Go back to my white. You could put some blue daisies in here if you wanted. I don't know how well a blue one would look. Let's see. Let's go with a teal one over here. I like the teal ones. They're pretty. They're different. up a little bit. So we can mix the, the teal and the shoreline. I'm still going to put a white one over here I think. Just so I can carry that white over here. And we don't need a, a ton of flowers so 
need a white one over here though. Okay, let's dot the centers with some cad yellow. Just a little quick little dot in there. I'm not really going to do anything more to these flowers. Okay. I think those are good enough right there. I think that's plenty for the little pot. And I ended up just using my two round brush for all of those. Let me wide angle out just a little bit. You can kind of see it, how it's looking. A little bit more. Okay, there we go. So cute. We might have to add, add a little bit brighter highlight on our leaves. Let's uh, grab some white. Oops, couldn't find my smaller angle brush there. So we're just going to get a little bit of white on the brush. A little bit too much water. My white's starting to dry out just a little bit. Just a little. I'll just put a little bit on here. Just some key places, not every place and don't let it take over okay that looks pretty good I think uh, I'll just leave it right there okay just some tiny touches of white nothing drastic we don't want to get drastic on there Okay, that's looking pretty cute. I like it. So we are going to move on to our little bunny rabbit next. Okay, um, I had to step away from this for a little bit, so now I'm back at it. Um, we're going to start working on our, on our little bunny guy here. Just want to get that foot shaped nicely. Okay, we are going to paint, start painting in some fur on this guy, and um, we're going to use a rake brush. Now, rake brushes come in a variety of brands and sizes, and you can get flat rake brushes, or you can get filbert rake brushes, just all different kinds of styles and sizes. Um, I've got Low Cornell and Royal. And Simply Simmons, this you can get at Walmart, or at Hobby Lobby. Um, this is a plaid. This is a, a one that she, I think she still carries this one, I'm not sure. But this one is a stiffer one. It's made for when she had papier paint. And then this one is the royal one. This is one of my favorite ones, especially for spattering with. So I'm going to try this smaller one here and see if it does the fur that I want. If not, then I might move to a bigger size here. So again, we want to wake the brush up by filling it with water. And now we're going to get our paints out. And for the bunny rabbit, of course, we're going to have our colors that we used in our base coat which was morning mist and plum suede and we'll get some white out and I think I'll put some burnt umber out as well Water's dried up over here on this edge, so I'm going to re-spritz this side of my palette with water, just with a, a travel spritzing bottle. That's all I use. 
just straight tap water. I don't use anything special there. Okay, so I'm going to start by going in with some darker colors first, I think, with some burnt umber. So I'm going to load my brush. I want to get a little bit of water. I want this to be thin enough to come off of my brush very easily. I want the strokes to just um, come off. We'll be up kind of up, up on the tip of these bristles. Let me put it under this camera. So you see my bristles out there on the end? Those are what we're going to be trying to apply some paint with. So his tail is going to be right here. We'll make a fluffy little tail right there. So we want to put some of this fur around it because I'm going to make his tail white. So we're just going to do some short little strokes coming off of that. I think I'm going to mix a little bit of this plum suede in there with it. A little bit of water. I added more paint to my brush, so I needed to add more water up on the tippy tippy. going to create, create some layers of fur here. And these are a little bit long for the, the bristles, but this is our first little under undercoat layer of bristles of fur. More water. Those bunnies, when they were in our planner, those baby bunnies were just the cutest things ever. And I'd watch the mama in the evening come and feed her babies. And um, that's what rabbits do. The mama finds a place to lay, to put the, the babies. And it's not in the same place where she nests, which I found that interesting. And then she comes and feeds them twice a day and checks on them. And the, um, the interesting part is, well, not the interesting part, but the educational part I feel like I need to share is if you ever find baby bunnies out and they're just in some weird random place, don't think that the mother has left them because <laughs> that's just what they do. the direction of the fur right here on these edges. So with our other layers we'll try to make that. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm not going to clean it. I'm going to go into this color here. Of course, pick up some water to thin it down. And we want to make our strokes a little bit shorter this time. So we'll just keep them just small little this was this is with that morning morning mist color small little strokes. You're up on the very tips of those bristles. 
if the paint is not flowing, you don't have enough water in your brush. And if it's just disappearing as you paint it on, then you've got just a little bit too much water. So there is a fine line there for finding the right amount of water and paint to put in your brush. all the way around. I'm going to make sure we bring it out over our leaf here a little bit. Go back a step here and get some of that darker. He's going to be a fluffy little bunny. He's going to be so cute. Okay, I'm going to go into some white now. This dirty brush into that. And little delicate strokes here. You're really not laying down a whole lot of paint because we're just using the very tips of the brush. Oops. Make sure you're layering, you're not just making a row, because if you just make a row, then it's going to look like a row. So I'm kind of moving all over the place so I won't have the tendency to make a row. Little strokes. And like I said, I'm not a I'm not an animal painter. <laughs> so if you've got a better way to paint a bunny in, go for it. I think I'm going to add some strokes, a few strokes of soft black in here. So I'm going to put that out on my palette. And again, get some water. I am not cleaning my brush. Unless I feel like my soft black needs to be darker. Soft black has a little bit of a brown tint to it. Not thin enough. And I'm just 
just going to put a few of these in here as soon as I can get it to flow off of my brush. Wipe my brush out. Reload some. It's not so packed in there. Sorry, a little bit long. I'm going to make them shorter than that. I want a little. I'm not getting this soft black quite as thin as what I would like it to be. Just a few of these. We don't want a, a lot in here. Okay. Now I'm going to wash my brush out because I want to go into some white. Okay, I've washed my brush out. Now um, I want to make sure that I use just clean water here for my white. Because I don't want to tint it. some too long I want some short short little strokes okay that happened because I laid my brush down too hard too much pressure we have to remain up on the tips of the brush The white will fade down in there. Like I said, I am not an animal painter, so please be nice. I do, I do my best based on what's in my head. A little bit too much pressure there. I'm just going to remove that. up on the tips. The tip, the tip, the tap. He's looking like a wiry haired bunny. That's for sure. We might have to do a little bit of razzle-dazzle here. I am going to grab a scruffy brush. I don't want to use the one that I used earlier because I didn't get it very clean. So I'm going to get a different one. I want to go ahead and put his tail in there. The beginnings of his tail. So we're going to use some white. And... I'm using a Deerfoot scruffy brush this time. This one is an, a plaid one. Okay, I'm gonna tap him in a fluffy little tail. There are some amazing animals painters out there. I wish I was one of them. <laughs> okay, there's the beginnings of his tail. I'm going to go ahead and wash this brush out. This is one that is okay. A deer foot is okay to uh, wash out because it will dry pretty quickly. Its uh, bristles aren't as um, 
compact as some of those other brushes are. Okay, so I'm going to paint in the feet, put a coat of solid paint on there. I'm going to do the plum suede and the morning mist and mix them together. Maybe a little bit morning mist than plum suede. I just want to slightly darken up that. apologize for my squeaky chair. It has just got the squeaks so bad I have not had an opportunity to replace it yet. So every movement that I do, it's a squeak. I promise, it's the chair, it's not me. His fur looks a little bit too wiry for me. So I'm going to take this deer foot. Let me see if i got a little bit smaller one. Yeah, but I don't want to use that smaller one. I'm going to stick with this one. And I'm going to stipple a little bit on him. Let me add some more white. So I'm going to take the white and the morning mist and try and soften him down. <clears throat> A little bit with some stiffling on here. Very lightly. I don't want you to be quite so wiry haired. I have to paint the feet back in, but that's okay. So I think if I was to do the bunny rabbit again, I would probably just use the the uh, deerfoot stempler the whole way. <laughs> that's going to give me a little bit softer, softer bunny fur there. Deerfoot stippling does much better. So we're going to do the same colors that we did. Ignore all of the rake brush stuff because I'm going to change that in my instructions to just use the stippler. So we did um, white and morning mist. So I'm going to go into my plum suede and um, morning mist. Just dirty brush right into it. And we'll put a little bit of this in here. Let's make him fuzzy wuzzy. So if you're painting along with me, I apologize for all of the... I'm going to go into some soft black. And I might leave the burnt umber out this time, I don't know. Okay, that was a lot. Put some of this in here. We're going to go over it with some white. So that will take it down. I might leave it that you can choose either uh, a Deerfoot stippler or you can choose the rake brush because some of you might be a little bit better at painting fur in with a rake brush than me. 
So, all right. I'm gonna go in. I think I'm gonna wipe my brush off, but I'm not gonna wash it. I can go into some white. And it won't be white white because um, it's got some of that soft black mixed in with it. I'm really not sure this is making the bunny any better. really loose stuff that's out on the edges just tap a little bit harder on the brush and it will spray the bristles out a little bit more and you can get more now that looks like a fuzzy a fuzzy little bunny so I, I think he looks much better that way and I still want to add a layer of white on here I want to let that paint dry just a little bit. I'm going to repaint in my feet. And this time I think I might add some white in there. I want the bottoms of the feet to be a little bit lighter. This is just a playful little bunny. He's not uh, he's not going to be exact buddy so all right that looks better I like that lighter color on those feet Just taking a damp brush and move, removing some of that. I want it to be a little bit more shaped like that one. You know, the bottoms of their feet kind of look like eggs, I think. <laughs> Okay, that other paint looks pretty dry. I'm going to stipple in the tail again real quick. A cute little bunny tail. And then I'll put a little bit of this Keep him nicely shaped. Don't let him get uh, a weird shape. Okay, that's a cute fuzzy little bunny. He looks like a, a baby. The baby ones when they are, you know, born and so little, they are just fuzzy, fuzzy little things and they are just the cutest things ever. So, we used the same colors, layered them on the same way, except that time I didn't put burnt umber, so I might leave the burnt umber out and um, just use those, those colors there. The morning mist, the plum suede, the white, and the soft black. And um, just stipple them in in layers till you get a nice fuzzy little bunny that is cute as can be. Okay, I'm going to let this dry so that we can uh, look at it when it's dry and see what we need to add on here. Okay, I'm back at this. Um, we are going to do some shading on our bunny here. I'm going to take a little bit of this plum suede here. A little bit too much water in my brush, so let me get some of that out. And 
let's go around our feet here. Keep our shape nice on the foot. put some morning mist out on my palette because I want to put just a tiny little bit of shading on the tail. And we'll put some down here on the tail. Just pity pat it. keep that texture in the tail. We just want to keep it down more on the lower part of the tail. We'll come back with some white and brighten up the top here. Um, I want to paint in the pads and stuff on the feet. So I'm going to take some of this plum suede and paint those in. Let me get a little bit of water. my shape here. And then don't forget the little toes. Toe pads. to repeat this and get it a little bit more solid coverage. Let that dry. I'm going to add some white on here at the top of the tail. Actually, I think I'm going to use my little Deerfoot stippler here. a little bit more at the very top. Nice fluffy bunny. And then we'll put some on the, I think the outer edges of the bunny. Just up here, I just want to lighten this. Just a scooch. paint on my brush. Yeah, I think I'll put a little bit right down here. I want it to look super fluffy. Oh, he's so cute. A little bit closer about that shading out a little bit farther than I wanted. Okay, that looks really good. 
I want to shade a little bit around the tail now. So I'm going to do that with that plum suede. I'm going to work it into my brush so it's nice and sheer. The more you work it in with some water, the sheer it gets. And then we'll just pity pat some of this around the bottom part of our tail. Yeah, I'm going to take some of that soft black, get a little bit of it, it on my brush. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of shading on the pot here. A little bit more water. Not a lot, just where we've come over it with the, the fur needs to be. And I want you to pity pat it so it looks, you know, irregular and not a solid line. I'm going to take my one, one round and just stipple in a little bit here so I can make the fur more even. much better. Okay, let's get our second coat on the feet. Cute. Just need to separate those a little bit. Oh, I missed that one. I missed this one right here, so let me get it. Now you could do the feet in reverse. You could paint the feet in dark and then make the pads a lighter color. So, just a couple of options there that you have. Okay, let's shade a little bit on our um, feet with the plum suede. We're going to keep this kind of sheer, so we're going to work it into our brush. You have to have water in your brush, a little bit of water, and you just work that paint into your brush until it becomes sheer. And how it looks right here is how it's going to look when you go to paint. So we don't want a ton of color. We're going to put this along the bottom down here of our feet, of the lower parts. Come down the sides a little bit, I think. And let's also go around the, this pad. And if it gets too wide, just take the water edge and gently work that. See, that's way too wide. I just want a little bit of shadowing under there. And then along the top, we'll do some white. Just a little bit more white. 
when I want my paint to be a little bit more brighter, I need that water in there to blend it. But when I uh, don't want it to be such a wet float, after I load my brush, I will just touch my paper towel and we'll work out some of the water. And then we are good to go. And I think I worked out a little bit too much. Alright, now for these smaller pads, I'm not sure I like that wide float on my pads here, my big ones. I think I might just go with a, a small brush. Let's see what I got out here. Get my two round out, and I think instead of white, I'm going to do the morning mist. Maybe I'll mix a little white in it just to lighten it. And then we'll just put a little line on there. And we'll do the same down here. These aren't shaped very well, so this is the mix that we base coated it in, I think. Just fix those shapes. Okay, let me come back with just straight white. And we'll just do a couple little dots. Got a wild hair on this brush. A couple of wild hairs. And then on these, we'll just give a little dot. Boy, that really definitely has a wild hair in it. I'm going to go along the bottom part again. Oops. Let me do that just a tad bit too dark. soft black in there. Got that kind of V area right there. I want a little bit of shading in there. And right here. Okay. I think I'm going to leave the bunny there. Let me wide angle out just a little bit. I think we'll leave the bunny there for now. I might want to come back and add a little bit brighter highlighting on the feet. Because I really feel like it's, when I zoom out on it, that it's just not quite bright enough.
Okay. That is just so cute. Okay, now we want to concentrate on the eggs. So we need to determine some really pretty egg colors. So we've got our shoreline, which is um, a pretty color, but I want it to be a little more pastel-y, so I think I will add some white to it and make one of the eggs this color. And I think I will do... one of the eggs, maybe... Let's mix... some white to that too because I want I want the eggs to be a little bit lighter color. So let's go in and we're going to mix white. Oh let's see. Okay. Let's let me get a brush here. Smaller flat brush. This is a size eight. Okay, so let's mix some white and some shoreline. Get this really pretty. Too much water in my brush. Let me lay that over there so I can get the water out. It's really pretty soft blue here. Put some extra white out. I hope you can tell that's a blue color. It's a very light blue. Get that glare off of my palette. Okay, we'll paint this one in. I'm going to try and stay off of my graphite line so that I can come back in and erase it. Since I'm using a little bit lighter colors, I don't want to get my paint on it because it'll take a little bit more to cover those lines. Once you get paint on your graphite lines, they're set. So if you um, don't think you can control that. Erase your lines back to where you can barely see them before you start painting. Okay, the next one, I'm going to see if I can mix cad yellow and buttermilk together. I'm making a light yellow that is opaque. I don't want it to be the same color as the background, so let's see how this goes. see that just fine and we're gonna do two coats so I'm gonna get one coat on each one and then once I get them dry I'm going to erase my graphite lines and then put my second coat on all right and the last one I'm gonna do green tea tree green tree <laughs> white to make this really pretty soft green. And then we'll come back and decorate the eggs and add our grasses in, a few little daisies. I'm thinking about adding a butterfly on here, so we'll see how that goes. looking pretty good. Let me get them dry and get my second coats on. Okay, I've put a few extra 
colors on my palette. Uh, leaf green, Laguna, dried clay, along with the colors that we put out to paint in our eggs, which was shoreline, green tree, um, cad yellow with a little bit of buttermilk, and some white. So we are going to decorate our eggs here. And I might put an orange out for my a brighter orange. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use this. I don't know what colors I'm going to use. I just thought I would have them out on the palette. So we're going to start with our blue egg here. And I'm going to use a one round. And I want this egg to be... Um, keep it in the blue values I think so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this that you can't see it's like thing on the end of it so let me just draw it in here because that would just be easier for you to see Just paint this in. Follow the shape of the egg. We'll just have some fun with this egg. Okay, now I'm going to go to my liner brush and grab some. Let's see what color do I want to use here. I'm just going to go with some white. I'm using my 10 O liner now. And I'm just going to follow this shape with some white. I'm going to come back and put a second coat on that blue right there. Okay. So now I want to um, create some lines on this. Go back to that Laguna color. And I'm, gonna, I'm using my um, one round. I'm going to paint a line going here and one here. These are my thicker lines, and one here, and I'll probably have to come back and repeat those. And then I'm going to take my liner brush and paint two lines in here, and two lines in here. Bit of water in my paint, and one line out here. Okay, let me get some second coats on here real quick. in my paint. Alright, so I'm going to try and go back over these lines here. I want them to be just a little bit darker. The thinner ones don't have to be. Okay, now I'm going to take my white, just dip my brush in it, and I'm going to create some dots on here. And I'm going to put this on the thick lines.
I we'll have to let this dry completely before we do any shading and highlighting on it. And let me see if I can go back over this line to darken it. I think I had just a little bit too much water mixed in with my paint there. Put some dots of white here and here. Just making a cluster of white dots, not really forming any kind of shape, just putting some dots in there. Okay. And then I think we'll put one more stripe on here. For blue. And we'll take that color all the way to the edge and we'll just make the whole tip of this one blue. Okay, my lines aren't quite straight, but I think once we add our shading and highlighting on there, it's going to be just fine. Okay, that looks really cute. Okay, so for our um, yellow one, I think I'm going to put dots on it with some orange. I'm going to do some orange dots and maybe some dried clay ones. So we want these to be random sizes. out and grab some dry clay. Those aren't very bright. Let's put some white ones in here. Because we're putting dots with a little bit of thick paint, it's going to take a little bit for these to dry. I can't straighten that. Kind of bugs me. I think it's my thin lines that are really crooked. Okay, so for this other one here, let's do like a traditional, well, what I think of as, as a traditional Easter egg. And we'll just put a couple of lines on here. Okay, so for the colors on this one, Let's do our leaf green. Let me add a little bit of white to it. Using my one round. Start out with the green at the top. Not very straight. Okay. 
I should have made them where they ended on the same. So, let me see if I can remove that and redraw my lines. dots over there in case they're not dry. Very gently with your eraser. You don't want to erase all that hard work you did. I don't want to get this green paint that went way out here past it though. Okay. Let me try this again with the drawing in my lines. Maybe I'll make them more. It'll be hard to draw now that it's gotten wet. I don't really want to draw them on with a pencil, but I might have to. Nope, oh, don't like those. This is my creative process. You're in it with me now. Those look pretty good. So they're pretty dark. I don't want them to be that dark, so I'm going to erase them back so that I can just barely see them. So that when I put paint over them, it will cover it. Well, let me grab a different one around here. It will hold its shape a little bit better. This is actually a two round. Okay, that looks much better. this water on my brush. I like this color much better. I might go over my dried clay ones over here. Definitely like the brighter orange. I don't know if I'm going over the right ones, but these are the ones that look dull. Okay, well, I have to go over these lines again. Let's go with some Laguna, with a little bit of white. Just mix it to a color that you like. It doesn't have to be the exact color that I'm doing. Repeat those. We 
Clean up my edge here. Damp brush, that's all you need. And my green. I'm going to add some white to it and lighten it up as well. All right, let's go in between with some white. I can get some out here that's not got color in it. Mixing a little bit of clean water with it. I want it to flow easily off my brush, but I don't want it to be watered down. end of this one I am going to just pull some strokes So I'm going to let my white dry here and see if I need to come back and go over it again. I still feel like I need to go over this line again. It doesn't feel bright enough. And like I said, you can do whatever decorations you want on yours. If you have some stencils that you would like to put on your eggs, that would be very cool. Okay, I need to let these get completely dry. And then we're going to come back and start shading and highlighting on them. Okay, let's uh, start shading on these. I'm going to grab my 10 curved flat. Okay, on this one we're going to shade with a little bit of Laguna. And I'm going to put burnt umber and a little bit of fresh black out. I'm not, I want to deepen this color, but I'm not really sure which color that I want to use. take the Laguna on my brush and I think I'm going to just barely get into some soft black. I mean just a teeny tiny little bit even that's probably too much and mix it in here to just I just want to dirty up that blue and make it just slightly darker. Okay we're going to shade along this edge our egg. Get my mop brush. Okay. I'm going to go along with the other edge. Lay your brush flat to give soft pressure. Make sure you've got some water in, in there with it so it will help it move along there. We'll have to come back and repeat that because I need to do the ends up there. 
Okay, for the yellow one, I think I'm going to shade it with some burnt orange. So I really want to work that into my brush. Get a nice soft color because I still want my egg to be yellow. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Nice soft float of color. Nice soft pressure. I'm going to mop that because it's a little bit dark. So I want to go in the whole thing and maybe remove just a little bit of it. along this edge. Alright, the green one. We're going to use some leaf green. You could go to ha some Hauser green if you have it out on your palette. I'm going to mix a teeny tiny little dot again of soft black. Just make that a dirty green there, maybe just a tiny bit more soft black. Okay, we'll start here. Lay your brush flat. Soft pressure. There's no reason to push hard when you're floating. Definitely have to walk that one up. I've got a little bit too much water in my brush, so this float will definitely have to be done again. Okay, the blue one is dry, so let's repeat the blue one. That's Laguna. And a little bit of soft black. I want it just a little bit darker on this lower edge of the egg. And I definitely want it darker out here. I might have to come back with just straight soft black in that dark color. Okay, my burnt orange, I think, I might add a little bit of soft black to that one as well. Dirty it up, it was a little bit bright, didn't want it quite that bright. So let's just dirty it. Much better. over here so I can keep the soft black in the picture. A little bit darker I think. You just add tiny little bits of soft black at a time. real quick because I had that orange on there. Water in my brush. My mop brush. Hope you were on camera for that. I wasn't looking up.
Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more soft black in my blue here because I really need that to be darker. Almost make it a gray color. And I'm out of lines right here on my egg. I got a little bit out of lines with my um, green. So I think I will take my buttermilk. I still got some on my palette. I think it's okay. Get some of this water out of my brush. We're going to be shading under these, so that will probably cover it up, but. I'm just going to touch that up. That's the good thing about having a solid color background. Is that you can touch up any boo-boos. Pretty easy. And while I have it on my brush, I'll go up here and fix the tip of this leaf. And see if there's any place else that I need to clean up. just cleaned up a little bit on the tips of my leaves. Okay, I'm just going to remove that because it's not working out the way I want. I'll give that Another try here. I get all the water out of my brush. Well, I just need the very tip of it. Okay, that's good enough. All right. I think our shading is pretty good, so let's get ready to add some highlights on our eggs. So for our highlights, I'm just going to use white. Try to only get white, not some of that other paint that's in there. Now you could dry brush this if you want to. I'm just going to do a back-to-back -back float here, and then mop it, kind of soften it down in there. Do it a couple of times. Back-to-back, -back, you paint a stroke on here, and then you flip the piece around and paint right beside. No gaps. And then I always mop just right on it right away. You must have water in your brush blended for a float because that's basically what we're doing. We're floating. there. Okay, I'm going to repeat it on that green one.
it's hard to really um, that's still wet distinguish the highlight when it's so close up a little wide angle out so you can kind of see those highlights a little bit better and I think I might just do a little bit along these top edges I liked it dark I'm thinking now it needs just a little bit of light on it reflective light buttermilk out so I can touch up around that egg. Okay, now we're going to get ready to put our grasses around here. We're not going to do a whole lot of grasses. You know, about as many as we did up there. Maybe a few more. We'll have to see how it looks after we get some in. And then we'll do some shading underneath. Might shade around the edge of this piece just to define it a little bit more. Okay, let's get ready for some grass. All right, let's add a few grasses in here. So again, we're just going to thin down a little bit of paint and then just decide where you want some grasses popping up out of here and vary your colors like we did up there. We don't want everything to be the same. Water. And it's okay if they come up over your eggs. So I'm going to bring some up here. I'm going to grab some blue in there. Have a damp brush handy if you get it on your eggs so that you can clean it up. A little bit darker green here. I'm just picking up you know some different colors. I'm not um, cleaning my brush. You want to bring up some bigger, thicker ones for daisies. Use a detail liner if you have trouble with a, a small round getting it to flow nicely. Oh, 
I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna, I wiped my brush off, now I'm just scrubbing some of this paint in here. I'm gonna bring some more shading in here in, in a little bit, but I just want to kind of get some of that going under these grasses. Okay, we're going to add some daisies in here. I'm going to get some fresh white. We used white and Laguna on our daisies, I believe. So I'm going to get those out. So we'll start with some white here. Get the excess water out of your brush because you don't want to. Um, your daisies to fade into the background. So I'm going to put one here. Oops, wrong way. Alright, let's put one here. A little bit darker so we can see it better. Start adding some blue ones in here. I'm just going to go right into it. Can mix that white right with it. Petals in the front will be shorter than the petals in the back. wipe my brush off and go into some white and add some more white ones. Still got a little bit of that blue in my brush so here. Okay, I think that's enough flowers there. Let's add our center, and we did that with cat yellow. And we'll wide angle out and see if we need to add a few more grasses in here before we do some shading. grasses. Here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the thick paint. I 
Alright, I think that's gonna be good enough. Alright, let's shade under all of this. And I think I'm going to use Go with some Hauser Dark or some Leaf Green, whatever's on your palette. With some soft black. I'm going to mix them all. I want a really dirty green here. Okay, I've side loaded for a float. So I want to go underneath everything with the flower pot. This is not super dark. When we go around our grasses, or under our grasses, we're going to um, make it a little darker. And I'm going to go up here just a little bit, kind of push those back. Okay, that is with our mix of, well, I used both leaf green and Hauser Dark Green and some soft black. So now we're going to use um, Hauser Dark Green and soft black, but quite a bit more soft black this time. So let me mix that. The Hauser Dark Green and soft black. I'm going to get this really dark. I'm definitely going to get some of that water out of my brush. And it's pretty sheer, so it's not um, super dark. I mean, super thick paint. that water edge of your brush. And just give it some nice shadowing under there. Let's wide angle out. Okay, I like that just like it is. I don't think I'm going to add anything more to it. Now, the outside edge of this piece, totally optional for if you want to do this or not. But you can take some antique gold. A sponge here. Let me dampen it. And you're going to get a little bit of antique gold. Not a whole lot. Let's keep it watered down. Keep it sheer. Just a little bit on the corner. And then you can just start kind of scrubbing it around the edge just kind of staining the edge with it. Just a tiny bit of paint on my sponge here. And if I feel like I'm laying down too much, I'll just take the rest of the sponge and work some of it off. 
get it a little bit lighter color because we just want a little bit. I feel like I don't have enough water in my sponge here. And again, this is totally optional if you like it just like it is, then you can leave this off. I didn't use antique gold anywhere in this project, so I might go put a little bit of it into my leaves. places. I might put some down here and some of these just to bring some of that antique gold down. Create some highlights on our grasses. trying to decide if I want to darken up that, that outside border. Let me see if I'm going to like this burnt ember. I've got some really watery burnt umber on, on this sponge. And it's not darkening it up too awful much. Really, it's going to be a personal preference. aging up the edges. Now if you're not sure about this you can varnish it and then apply this on the edges and if you don't like it you can wipe it off because the varnish will keep it from soaking down in there and then you if you do like it then you just apply another coat of varnish on there. a little bit better adding a little bit of burnt umber on there. So I had just I have just the tiniest amount of paint on here. I mean it is just a small 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 amount and I use the damp edge of the um, sponge to keep it softened down in there so that it doesn't take over. And that way, if I get too much, I can take that damp edge and just wipe it back and keep lightening it. I would much rather apply extremely light coats on here and go back and redo it as opposed to, um, you know, some really dark, dark colors. Let's add some of this burnt umber. 
underneath down here. Kind of bring it in to our shadowing here. Okay, it looks better adding that little bit of brown in there. Just a few little touches of burnt umber. It's a pretty sheer color so it doesn't doesn't really take over put a little bit kind of behind these grasses I think that's looking pretty good. I'll put a little bit around this egg. Alrighty. I think we're looking pretty good here. Our cute little fuzzy bunny. He definitely looks like the fur on some of those babies we had in our planter. finish up this project. I am uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it is cute as can be. The Easter Egg Hunt. That's what I've titled this one. I think it is just fun, fun, fun can't wait for you to paint this. Can't wait to see your paintings and uh, what you did with this particular design. And you can make your bunny more gray if you prefer, but I really like it, um, this color. So I thank you so much for painting with me, everyone. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.